Imagine a place so vast, so unforgiving, that water is a treasure more precious than gold, hidden beneath the sands and shadows of towering cliffs. This is Wadi Rum, where the desert stretches out, red and barren like an endless sea of stone. Here, ancient civilizations didn't just survive. They crafted a way of life out of one of the harshest landscapes on Earth. They didn't only endure, they thrived, turning scarcity into sustenance using only what the land provided. But how? How did they manage to create a life here with water hidden far below the surface and no rivers or lakes for miles? Today we'll uncover the secrets of Wadi Rum's ancient water systems, a marvel of resilience and ingenuity. From rock-carved channels guiding every precious drop to underground cisterns designed to beat the sun's relentless heat, these systems reveal the brilliance of a people who knew how to listen to the land. And as we explore, we'll find that these ancient lessons could hold answers for some of today's biggest challenges. Wadi Rum is a place that tests endurance at every step. It receives less than 100 millimeters of rain each year, about as much as some places receive in a single storm. By day, the desert heat is searing. By night, the temperatures plummet, dropping to near freezing. In this unforgiving landscape, every drop of water is a lifeline, each one more precious than the last. But the Nabataeans saw something others didn't. They saw possibility. When the rare rains fell, they didn't let the water vanish into the sand. They used the landscape itself, guiding the rain through channels carved directly into the rock. These channels were angled with care, using gravity as their silent partner to lead the water precisely where it needed to go. Every turn, every curve was planned to send the water down to cisterns hidden from the sun's scorching gaze. These cisterns weren't simple holes in the ground. They were thoughtfully crafted structures, positioned in the shade or even underground. By placing them out of the sun's reach, the Nabataeans created a cool refuge for their precious resource, minimizing evaporation and conserving every drop. It was a careful dance with nature, a balance of respect and mastery where even the smallest details mattered. In these systems, there is a quiet wisdom. The Nabataeans didn't try to overpower the desert, they listened to it, learning from its rhythms and turning its obstacles into their allies. Here, survival wasn't a battle, it was a partnership. Every channel, every cistern was a reminder that in Wadi Rum, the desert's harshness could be transformed, if only you knew how to work with it. The Nabataeans were not merely survivors, they were innovators, architects of the impossible. They mastered water where it was scarce, carving a life out of rock and sand, and their achievements went far beyond survival. In Petra, they designed a vast network of water channels and reservoirs that sustained their thriving city. But here, in the isolated depths of Wadi Rum, they refined their art, blending human ingenuity with the landscape itself. Across the ancient world, others faced the challenge of scarce water. In the deserts of Iran, engineers built kanats, long underground tunnels carrying water over miles. In Oman, Aflaj systems transported water to villages using a network of channels. Yet what sets Wadi Rum apart is how the Nabataeans adapted their knowledge specifically to the porous sandstone cliffs. They worked with the unique rock formations, carving channels and cisterns that harmonized with the land's natural structure. Their legacy isn't just in the stone, it lives on in the culture. For the Bedouins, these cisterns are more than ancient relics. They are a heritage, a part of their survival story handed down across generations. The Nabataeans left them more than structures. They left wisdom, a way of seeing the desert not as an enemy, but as an ally. In Wadi Rum, the Nabataeans remind us that even the most unforgiving landscapes can be transformed. They teach us that there is a way forward, if only we have the will to understand the land itself. Chapter 3. Lessons in Sustainability and Relevance for Today The Nabataeans mastered survival with only the tools nature provided, and in doing so they left us more than engineering marvels. They left a blueprint, a vision of how to live sustainably in the most extreme conditions. In their world, water wasn't a mere convenience. It was life itself, a resource to be guarded with reverence and care. Their systems were designed to conserve, not to waste, storing every drop with a purpose that resonates with us even today. As we face global water scarcity, their methods offer us insights that feel almost prophetic. 
Imagine if our modern cities in water-scarce regions adopted these same principles, capturing rainfall without relying on energy-intensive infrastructure, using natural land formations to store it, and protecting it from waste. In Wadi Rum, the Nabataeans showed us that sustainability wasn't a modern invention, it was a necessity born from a deep respect for the land. Their legacy offers us a perspective we desperately need. They remind us that water is something to cherish, not to squander. In our world of excess, the Nabataeans' wisdom feels like a call back to balance, to harmony, and, and perhaps a guide for the future. Conclusion Wadi Rum's Timeless Innovation Wadi Rum's water systems are more than ancient relics. They are a testament to the resilience of a people who transformed a harsh barren desert into a place of life and sustenance. The Nabataeans and the Bedouins who followed didn't just survive here, they built a way of life that thrived amid scarcity. The channels they carved and the cisterns they hid in the shadows of cliffs are not only marvels of engineering, but lessons etched in stone. As we leave Wadi Rum, let's take with us more than memory. These cliffs and sands hold something more enduring, answers. Answers to questions about conservation, sustainability and survival. In an age where resources seem endless, the Nabataeans remind us of the wisdom of restraint, of balance, of working with nature rather than against it. Their legacy challenges us, asking whether we too can find a way forward in harmony with our world. And perhaps as we face our own challenges, the wisdom of the desert will guide us, if only we're willing to listen.